everything you see exists in a delicate balance. Respect all of the creatures, from the crawling ant to the sleeping dog, the flopping fish, and the hungry cows. Wilson, don't we eat the fish and the cows? Yes, but when we pass away, our bodies become the grass, and the cows eat the grass. And so, we are all connected in the great circle of life. STEAM Scholars, we are back with a new unit. This unit is all about the Lion King. Oh, ho hold on guys, one, one second. Um, hello? Oh, so we're not talking about the Lion King. Oh no, okay, I apologize. So what are we talking about? Because I just gave an award-winning performance. Oh, okay. Okay, I, I can do that. I can do that. All right, awesome. <laughs> Bye. Hey, cut, 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 cut. Hey, man, take two. STEAM Scholars, this unit is all about ecosystems. Before we begin, let's look over the design process because this is something we as engineers and scientists will do every time we meet and do our projects. With any project, we are going to A, ask, what is the problem or what am I trying to create or solve? B, brainstorm, how can I solve or make what I'm trying to create? C, collect, collect information, data, or use prior knowledge that you have to help you with your creation. D, develop, think of a plan and then create your project. E, evaluate. What works? What doesn't work? What can you do to make it better? In F, fine tune. I will try again until my design is where I want it. Now let's go over each letter in the word STEAM. STEAM stands for science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Great job. For this unit, we will focus on the S for science, the E for engineering, the A for art, and the M for math. Now, let's explore. Ecosystems are made up of all living and non-living organisms in an area that interact or connect with each other, like the circle of life. Ecosystems consist of plants, animals, and other living things that make up communities of life in an area, as well as non-living things such as the sun, soil, water, air, and weather. Ecosystems contain many different kinds of life, and they can be as small as a puddle or as large as the ocean. Each organism has its own role to play in an ecosystem. Pause and discuss with your class about what living and non-living organisms you see in a garden. Great discussion. I am so impressed with your thinking skills. Your mind is expanding with more knowledge every day. Keep up the great work. Here are some living and non-living organisms from a garden that I thought of. Flowers, worms, birds, butterflies, soil, rain, sun, fruits, vegetables, bees, squirrels, seeds, leaves, and bushes. Remember that ecosystems are made up of all living and non-living organisms in an area that interact or connect with each other. So a garden is its own ecosystem as well. Each of the organisms that we discuss can be found in a garden, work together, and it has its own role to play. Each of those living organisms need food. All things need food. To explain how living organisms get the food they need, scientists write it down in an outline called a food chain. A food chain is an outline of who eats whom, just like the circle of life. A food chain is a single path outline of who eats whom that shows how energy, the ability to do work, 
flows between living things in an ecosystem. Energy in a food chain comes from the sun. A food chain is divided into three categories. Those categories are producer, consumer, and decomposer. Today, we're going to focus on producers. Producers are the first part of the food chain. They are living organisms that make their own food. Every plant is a producer. I bet you're wondering how a plant can make their own food. Great question. Take some time to discuss with your class about how you think plants make their own food. Plants use energy from the sun called photosynthesis to make their own food. So challenge time. For today's challenge, we are going to take an up-close look on plants, parts of a plant, and compare our plant to an artificial plant. In this project, you will explore the S for science, M for math, and the A for art. So for this project, you will need two pumpkin seeds, a greenhouse construction paper, cotton balls, scissors, water, a Ziploc bag, markers, a ruler, a pencil, and your teacher should have a stapler or some tape in the classroom. Instructions. Today, we are going to plant pumpkin seeds in a greenhouse. A greenhouse is also called a glass house or a hot house. It is a building where plants such as flowers and vegetables are grown. Most greenhouses have glass or translucent plastic roofs. Many greenhouses also have a glass or plastic walls. Greenhouses warm up during the day because the sun's rays heat the plants, soil, and structure. Greenhouses remind me of something we learned in a previous unit. Hmm, can you remember? Pause and discuss your answers with your class. But before you go, I will give you a hint. The word I'm looking for acted as a protective layer. It kept hot things hot and cold things cold. If you said insulator, great job. So, step one, we are going to cut out the outline of our greenhouse construction paper. Step two, we are going to cut out the middle rectangle. All right, step three, you're going to design your greenhouse with your markers. So I'm going to add some little squiggly circles. Remember, as always, this is your design. So you can do it however you would like. All right, next, step four, you are going to lightly wet your cotton balls. I'm gonna use my water bottle and just take my cotton balls. Get some back. You're gonna place your cotton balls in your Ziploc bag. Step six, you're gonna add seeds to your Ziploc bag. They are already in there for you. And next, you are going to staple or tape your bag to your greenhouse where the seeds are showing through the open rectangle. So 
look like this. Then you will, step nine, you will hang your seeds in your greenhouse on your classroom window and watch your seeds grow. You can create your own seed growth chart and chart your observations weekly. You will get a piece of paper, um, a plain sheet of paper or a lined paper will work great. You will label that paper seed growth chart. Now you will draw six equal lines down your paper. I'm gonna make my first line just a tad bit smaller. One, two, three, four, five. Now you will need four lines across. All right, and your first line will need to be further down on your paper. Um, and the last three lines will need to be equal in space. For the first column on our left side, we are going to write, draw your plants. So draw your plant will be here. Next, we're gonna write weather. Height. And week. You will be able to keep track of your plant's growth on this data sheet, and you are finished. So, you can write week one, week two, three, four, five, like that, and you'll draw what your plant looks like. You'll tell me the weather, is it rainy, is it sunny, is it cloudy, and the height of your plant. So you can take your ruler and try to measure your plant. So. STEAM scholars, I hope you enjoyed learning about ecosystems. Today we learned that ecosystems are made up of all living and non-living organisms in an area that interact or connect with each other. We also learned that a food chain is a single path outline of who eats whom that shows how energy, the ability to do work, flows between living things in an ecosystem. Energy in a food chain starts with the sun and it has three categories. Those categories are producer, consumer, and decomposer. Today, we focus on producers as we made a greenhouse and we learned that producers are the first part of a food chain. They are living organisms that make their own food. Every plant is a producer. Plants make their own food through a process called photosynthesis. The use of energy from the sun to make food. So think about it. Today, we learned about greenhouses and planted a pumpkin seed. We learned that a greenhouse is also called a glass house or a hot house. It is a building where plants such as flowers and vegetables are grown. Did you know that it takes about three to 10 days for a pumpkin seed to germinate? Germinate is a term that means to begin to grow from a seed. So keep checking on your pumpkin seed. You won't want to miss a thing. To help us learn more about producers and their structure, here is a small challenge. So take a look. You're gonna get out your artificial flowers and your magnifying glass, and you are gonna see what parts of a flower you can identify. So parts of a flower are, the whole thing is called a flower, and it has petals, and petals attract insects and birds. These animals move pollen from flower to flower, which helps the flowers produce new seeds. We will talk about this next week. The stem. The stem supports the flower and carries nutrients and water to the leaves. Leaves. 
The leaves use light from the sun to turn nutrients from the soil into food for the flower. Seeds. Seeds produce new flowers. And the roots hold the flower in the ground and pull water and nutrients from the soil, which they transport to the stem. So don't forget to look over your STEAM career cards. You can be an ecologist, an entomologist, an engineer, or a botanist. Until next time, my STEAM friends, be great. Bye-bye.